So this is the brief talk today. And although Rita did give the introduction, thank you very much for that. Since the recording is on, I will go over it again just really briefly. Uh, Director of Editorial Data and Analytics is at Foundry, formerly IDG Communications. You might know it as publisher of technical websites such as Computer World, InfoWorld, PC World, Mac World. Uh, I, I do InfoWorlds Do More With R series. Uh, practical R for Mass Communications and Journalism, part of the R series uh, by CRC Press. Uh, who aren't I? I am not a design expert. <laughs> we have professional designers at work. Uh, but I do do a lot of exploratory data visualization. So I'm not going to talk to you today about how to make gorgeous maps. I'm going to show you how to make incredibly easy maps. Because the map view package is just unbelievably easy to use. And I really do hope it gets more well-known in the R community. Uh, I did write this article for InfoWorld and an accompanying video for that. And there will be a link to it. And I will have a link to the GitHub repository for this talk, including the slides too at the end of, of my talk. I don't think there's a lot to take notes about, but you don't have to worry about that either. So the data I'm using today come from the 2021 England and Wales census. And in addition to the official website where you can get the data, there's this great site on Observable. If you're not familiar with Observable, it's observablehq.com where you can, uh, one of the members there are created a great site to download the data and that's where I got it. So I downloaded the data portion of it at the CSV, you can see here. And I also downloaded the geospatial general file as a GeoJSON file, just for the demonstration today. So of course, step one uh, is importing the data. And as we all know, data is almost never in the format we want, especially for a demo. So I did do a bit of wrangling. The script I used to do that is also in the repo. I'm not gonna go over that today because this is about the visualization part, but it wasn't really that complicated. And here is a look at the data. Uh, you, can see the, <clears throat> you can see the columns and, and uh, the names and, and the samples data with the dplyr glimpse function. Excuse me, just a second, early morning here, sorry. That those, those columns starting with DEP, that's a deprivation index, I guess similar to what the US Census would call household in poverty, but it's more detailed saying if, if you have none, one, two, three, or four of the criteria for being a household in deprivation. So reading a spatial file into R is, is actually these days as easy as importing a CSV thanks to the SF package and its ST underscore read function. And then I can use map views map view function and I get a quick plot and it's interactive. So if I roll over here, hopefully you can see that, that you get little, little information here. But, but this is just the geography file. Of course, I'd like the data file in there. So again, it's as easy to join data with a geospatial file in R as it is to do two data files joining. Uh, you can use the regular dplyr left join function. Uh, the important part here is to make sure the geospatial file is the first one and that you specify what columns are the same in both data sets. So if you look at the file, it looks the same as the data file did before, but there's an extra geometry column with multi polygons down there in the last line. So if I map view the, the joined data set, it looks the same, but what's different is the rollover looks the same, but if I click on it, I suddenly get, I can see all the data here. So that's kind of handy for, for certain applications already. But it would, be more, it would be more handy if I rolled over the polygons, if I saw the name of the places and not the numbers, because the numbers, I mean, I, I doubt even local people have memorized what these numbers are. So the default rollover displays the row names. If I change the row names to the actual names of the places, the rollover will then show the actual name. So here I'm just, I'm just setting the row names to the area name column. And now if I roll over, you can see that I see their, their row names. Before I go further, this is, that was kind of a large area. So I'll subset just the Cambridge area. A uh, dplyr filter works on a SF geospatial objects. Here I use the string R package str underscore detect to just check any area name that includes Cambridge 
And now if I'm doing the map view, I get just Cambridge here. And for those of you who are local, you probably recognize this place. But what I'd like to see is the map colored by a variable like population. And here is where the map view magic happens. Okay, so look at this code. I just added what I wanted my Z column to be. Map view already knows latitude and longitude are, are the first two dimensions, but that's it. I just add Z column equals and the name of the column I want. I didn't have to say they're polygons. I don't have to give it a color palette. I can, but there's a reasonable default. I have a legend, which I can customize or turn off. I get layers. I mean, right now there's only one layer, which I can turn on and off, but I can have multiple layers. And again, I get the pop-up with all the data, which I can customize. And if you see the label, of, if you see the label at the bottom here, this Cambridge population, if I click on that, like, like here I have like, the map is off center. If I click on that, it pops right back here. All of that, one line of code. This is why I love this package. Now the background here is gray. If you want to add tiles, this is, you, you add the map.types argument in map view and you can pick the backgrounds you want. Although if you notice here, I added the code and there are no tiles. Why is that? Sorry, what again? This is not a map view thing. This had to do with these specific files that I was using. And it turned out that there was no coordinated reference system or CRS. Uh, it, it didn't have a CRS by default. Uh, briefly, CRS explains how a 3D globe is translated to a 2D drawing. Uh, so it turns out when I did a little investigation, these files use the British National Grid Coordinates, which is a CRS of 27700. So I set that so the files had that. But then I actually needed to change that because most map tiles, like with Google Maps or OpenStreetMap, they use a CRS of 4326. So I had to transform it, which is surprisingly easy with the st underscore transform function. I just took my data set Cambridge and, and said what I wanted to do. And then magically it reprojects the whole thing. Uh, this is a shorthand for, for the code below, but I find for obvious reasons that the shorthand is a lot easier because I'll never remember what to do for, for the bottom ones. That is a very inexact explanation of, of transform, but, but for, for our purposes, it will work fine. So now if I add tiles, they actually appear. So if you wanna play with this data, you're gonna to need to do that too. And if you see I did map types, I, I put in three different map types here. And now if I go to my layers, I can change my background tiles, which is kind of fun. And there's a bunch of customizations you can do if you want. Here I'm setting the alpha dot regions to zero so that the polygons are opaque and I can see the imagery behind it. You probably wouldn't want to do that normally, but for the imagery, it's kind of fun. I changed my line width to three. I changed the color to white. And if you look at the map view help files, it, it shows you all the different things you can, you can customize. How do you know what background tiles are available? Uh, th these background tiles actually come from the R Leaflet Extra package, and there's a website where you can you can see some of them. This is thanks to Quarter. This is actually a live a live website, so I can actually th these are kind of fun. The Stamen ones, it's which are not necessarily like geospatial, but like it's all sorts of fun things you can do with your map background. Okay. You can add more data layers very easily. So I've got my first layer and then just with the plus sign, similar to ggplot, you can add different layers. You, you might not wanna do it this way. Uh, typically you might want to add layers to add points 
uh, to add lines for, for streets or, or trails. I, I used this recently to do a trail map for my local Friends of the Rail Trails Committee. Uh, here you'll see I, I set the alpha region opacity to one so that you don't see the underlying layers. And then you can turn these off and on. It's, it's really, it's, you get so much functionality for such little code. That is what I love about this. You can turn off the legends, just with legends false. You can change the default color palette. Now this is cool. You can also do a side-by-side -side map with a slider, which, which, you know, this is probably not the best application for this. Uh, I use this for a redistricting map on my local blog. So, you know, the, the before you were in this district, after you were in that district. Uh, but basically you make one map here and then you make and save it to a variable. The, the first one on the left here is, is households with no deprivation. Uh, the one on the right is households with two deprivations. And then all you need to do is, is this pipe character between the two of them and you get this. It's also really easy to add address searching with the leaf M package. So it's garnish map, leaflet extras, and then I'm using open street map searching here because it's free and super easy to set up. So if I were to go in, it's, it's not quite as slick as Google address search. You have to wait for the options to pop in and choose one, but it does work. You can add Google address search to this too, but it's a bit more complicated to set up on Google side and you do have to put in the credit card. And if you have zillions of people using a map, you'll end up paying, but it, it needs to be high. But if, if I did, let's say Trinity College, no, not Trinity County. No, we do not want to go to Texas on this map. Let's try again, Trinity College, there we go. And it pops right in there and hopefully you all know that that's where it is, I'm hoping. <laughs> you can do, you know, you can do other things. Uh, I looked online before I came here, Midsummer House is supposedly one of the nice restaurants here. So you can find that here. Hopefully that's where it is. Y'all would know, I don't, but uh, anyway. So you, as I mentioned, you can customize your pop-ups and also the rollovers here. <laughs> So here's some code that works to customize those. So you create the HTML you want, and you can use variable names, the, the data set and the column name here. Here I'm using glue. You can also use base R's paste for this. Just create your HTML. Uh, then you wanna run it through the HTML tools, HTML function. So it turns it into actual, like R understands that it's HTML. And you use Basar's L apply to turn that into a list because that's what this wants. And here I am using the same thing for both the pop-ups and the labels, the rollover labels, which you probably wouldn't want to do just to save space on the slide. But if you see now, you know, you get a really nice thing here. If I click on it, you get the same thing, which is kind of silly, but in real life, I would make them different. But that's not that, it's not really that hard to get this kind of functionality. That's that's what I love about this. And that is a very brief tour of MapView. I just want to stress that there are other great mapping packages in R. Uh, MapView is not the only one, and some might appeal to you more, especially if you are doing a lot of customization. I would say TMAP is almost as easy to use as, as, as MapView. Uh, it, it, the advantage is it, it gives you both static and interactive working environments uh, by default. So if you are doing something that you want to do print you, or to a PDF or something like that, uh, this might be a great choice. Uh, the other thing that is compelling about it, it's got built-in customized binning. If you want to change the way MapView bins, you know, sets its, it sets its color categories, there's a little more code you have to write to calculate it. 
Uh, there's a lot of built-in customized binning functions in TMAP. So if that is important to you, uh, take a look at TMAP. Leaflet is probably the best known mapping package in R. It is, it's very robust. Uh, I, I find it a bit more complicated to use. I still use it. If I want to do something really fast, I use MapView. If I'm doing something that I want to super customize, I might look more at Leaflet. Uh, you do have extreme control over the look and feel. There is also ggplot too. It's not only for geographical information systems, of course, uh, but it does have useful mapping capabilities that have gotten quite more robust in the past few years than they were, let's say, five or 10 years ago. If you're already familiar with the, the tidyverse ggplot ecosystem, you might want to take a look at that. And for more on MapView, uh, I have a link here to my InfoWorld article. Uh, the creator of the package also did a, a tutorial on YouTube. I have a link to it. If, if you really want to get into all the functionality, there's a lot more to it than I could show in 20 minutes. Uh, I would recommend that. So I think we're done a little bit early, but uh, that will give time for questions and make sure everybody doesn't run over their lunch hour. I do, again, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, the repo for this is available on GitHub, including the slides, uh, the data files, and the wrangling I did on it. Uh, I'm, not on, I'm not currently active on Twitter, but if you're on Mastodon, you can find me there. And if you're not on Mastodon, you can still look at Mastodon content without needing an account. So that's it. 